What is a spread spectrum signal and why are they used? Well, let's start by looking at a standard signal. And here I'm showing an either amplitude shift keyed or pulse amplitude modulation signal, where in the time domain, we're going to send each of our digital symbols for a period of capital T. And when we send over a wireless channel, we are going to be using a multiplication by a carrier. In this case here, I'm going to call it F1. And what does that mean when we multiply in the time domain? It means in the frequency domain, we're going to have the Fourier transform of this square appearing centered at the frequency of that carrier. So here we have F1, the Fourier transform of a square is a sinc function. And so this is what it looks like in the frequency domain. And the bandwidth across here, if we take it from uh, the frequency band between these two zeros here, then this is going for capital T. That bandwidth there is two divided by T. That's the amount of bandwidth that we are using to send this signal. OK, so this is a standard signal. What about spread spectrum? Well, as the name suggests, we're going to spread out in the spectrum. We're going to actually use more spectrum than we necessarily need. Why are we going to do that? Why are they used? We'll talk about that in a minute, but let's think about some examples and show some examples of how you do the spread spectrum to give more of an understanding. Okay, there's three main ways. And one way, let's think of this one first, is called frequency hopping. So in this case here, we still have our time signal going over the same amount of time. But now instead of just picking one carrier, we are going to have a range of carriers that we can pick from. And in this case, I might just show it with four, for example. And we are going to randomize the choice of the frequency. So now instead of just using a single frequency, we are going to hop between them. So at any given time, we'll only be using one of these frequencies, uh, but we're going to randomize the choice of hopping between them over time. So what does that do in the frequency domain? Well, we get to choose where these frequencies are. So let's say, for example, we chose that to be F2, this F3, this F4, for example. And let's say at the first, for the first symbol in the first time, it was chosen to transmit on F3. So then in the frequency domain at that time for that first symbol that's being sent, this would be what the frequency domain spectrum would look like. But in the next symbol time slot, uh, if we jump to a new frequency, perhaps it might have been F2, then in the second time slot, the frequency would have been here. The spectrum would have looked like this. And of course, if the next time slot was F1, uh, it would be taking up this amount of frequency. And of course, whenever randomly we jump to F4, then we have this frequency band being used. So at any given time, we're only using one of the carrier frequencies, but over time, we are going to be using the totality of all of this bandwidth. So that is the way we are spreading the spectrum in frequency hopping. So let's think of another way of spreading the spectrum, and that's a, an approach called time hopping. So in this case, we only use a single carrier, but now we divide up the time. So we divide it up into slots, the capital T, in this case I've shown four, and we are dividing it up into uh, four slots so that in this particular case, the symbol is being sent in the third slot. So instead of sending the symbol over all the time, we're now sending it only during the third slot. And the slots one, two, and four are remaining silent. What that means in the frequency domain is we are now turning our signal on and off four times as fast. And that means that in the frequency domain, we're going to be using four times the bandwidth. So now our bandwidth is going to look like this. It spreads out the sync function. And so again, in this case, we are also spreading the spectrum. In this case here, we only use part of the spectrum at any given time. At this case here, we're only using part of the time to send and we're remaining silent at other times. We're using all of the spectrum all the time. So there are two different ways of doing it, both of which are spreading out the spectrum. Uh, in this case here, the bandwidth between these two uh, points here, the two zeros here, is multiplied by a 
a factor of four because we've got four slots. So this is now eight divided by t. That's the spread spectrum. And the third main way of doing it is what's called code division multiple access. And in this case, we are going to be using all of the time slots and all of the frequencies. So in this case, what we do is we take our time and we put a randomized code. So in this case, it is plus one, minus one, minus one, and plus one. And we just multiply our period, our, our symbol period in the time domain, we multiply it by this randomized code, which changes at a faster rate. And of course here, I've shown it with four elements of the code. And that means that just like with time hopping, we're going to be spreading out in the frequency domain. So this, the Fourier transform of this, the frequency usage of CDMA is the same here as it is for time hopping. Okay, so why do we do this? So this is the question here. I mean, we've shown about how the spreading happens to spread the spectrum, but the question is why? Why do we spread the spectrum? Well, there are a number of reasons. So let's uh, pick one of those reasons and try to use an example to show it. And the first reason is to be able to use multiple users all using the channel at the same time, but without needing to coordinate those users. And so for example, in frequency hopping, if we hop around the frequencies like this, then another user can also be hopping around the frequencies. And if we have enough frequencies, I've only shown four here, but if we had more frequencies, then there's a small chance that both users are trying to use the same frequency band at the same time. And so you can have other users using the other parts of the spectrum that you're not using. And therefore, everyone can use, lots of people can use the spectrum at the same time without coordination. So that's a really good advantage of the randomization in frequency hopping. Exactly the same thing happens with time hopping. It's just you're using different time slots and the other users. So, and in CDMA, what happens is if you have a users with a different code sequence, then it turns out you can actually receive multiple signals at the same time uh, without them interfering. If you want more information on CDMA, then check out the uh, show notes. We've got a number of other videos on the channel uh, about CDMA and other aspects of communications like different modulation formats and so on. There's a web page you'll find there with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. So one of the reasons is multiple users. And what are some of the other reasons? Well, another reason is for security and, and, and covertness of your communications. So sometimes, particularly military communications, you'd like to be able to send your signals without other people even knowing that you're transmitting. And so again, if we take frequency hopping, if you're hopping around the frequencies, and if somebody else is listening across the frequency band, they'll only see certain parts of the spectrum being used at any given time. And they won't be able to, possibly won't even be able to know and decide that you are transmitting at all. Um, certainly also, they hopefully also won't be able to detect you uh, and intercept your communication signal. And one of the reasons, or well, the reason there is, unless they know the exact randomized sequence that you're going to be using to jump between, then they won't be able to receive your signal continuously by following those jumps. Of course, the receiver that you are intending to transmit to needs to know your randomized sequence of frequency hopping or time hopping or the code of CDMA. So if your intended receiver knows this randomized sequence, then they can receive your signals no problem. But someone who doesn't know that randomized sequence, they won't be able to follow your signal wherever it jumps to in frequency or whichever time slots you're jumping to in time, uh, and they won't be able to decode your signal. And the third main reason is to avoid jammers. Typically, when someone is trying to interrupt communications, they can send a jamming signal at a particular frequency. I mean, one thing that a jammer could do was they could send jamming interference across the full spectrum. And then certainly that would interfere with all of your signals. Why don't they do broadband jamming? Well, because they also don't want to be detected. They don't want people to know that they are trying to do jamming um, because it's generally military type applications uh, and the jammer doesn't want to be detected. Uh, so 
To do that, they jam by doing narrow band jamming and they jump around the frequency band, a little bit like we're doing with frequency hopping. So if they're jumping their jammer around and you're doing frequency hopping around, then most of the time you're going to be avoiding the jammer. In time hopping, if they're doing a narrow band jamming, you're using all of the spectrum all of the time, then only part of your spectrum is going to be affected by the narrow band jammer. And so there's an advantage to spreading the spectrum. And the same thing applies in CDMA. So for all those three reasons uh, of having multiple users in the system, uh, being able to avoid others detecting you, uh, and also avoiding jamming, those three reasons uh, apply for each of these three types of spread spectrum. So if this video has given you more insights into spread spectrum, please like the video. It helps others to find the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel. There's plenty more videos. And check out the show notes below the video. You'll find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel, please consider joining the channel by hitting the join membership button. And that will really help me a lot in making these videos.